Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Gayla Tia Strong. I'm a physical therapist who got 100% on my NPTE and this led me to co-found SPT with me, which is an NPTE prep course. If you enjoy this content, feel free to check out sptwithme.com when you're studying for the NPTE. Now onto what you're actually here for, let's talk about the muscle spindle apparatus. Before we start talking about the physiology behind it, you need to know where you are in space. So if you look at the image to the left, this is what you normally think about when you're trying to picture a muscle, correct? Now, when we're talking about the muscle spindle apparatus, understand that this structure is embedded in parallel with our muscle fibers. So the muscle fibers that we normally think about, these are called extrafusal muscle fibers. These are the ones that you see on the outer portion of the picture to the right. You know, you're looking at cylindrical rods. These are the ones that contract. Now, if we delve a little bit more into the muscle spindle apparatus, this is where the term intrafusal muscle fiber comes in. So if you look at the middle portion of the right image and you see all those little blobs, these little blobs are actually nuclei. And you're going to notice that in this middle portion of this muscle spindle apparatus, there are no contractile elements. And you could tell this because if you just look, there aren't any of those red fibers that we normally think about as, you know, muscle contraction fibers. However, intrafusal fibers, they do contract. They just don't contract at the center region. So if you just look a little bit superiorly and inferiorly uh, to these nuclei region, you're gonna see that um, the fiber actually turns a little bit more into what looks like a muscle fiber that we normally think about. And that's where the contractile elements are. So within the intrafusal fibers, the two types of fibers involved are the nuclear chain fibers and the nuclear bag fibers. Both have nuclei in the middle of the fiber, as you see, and both have the contractile components more distally, what we just talked about. Now, ultimately, if you're looking big picture, there are a ton of extrafusal fibers with intrafusal fibers in parallel to them. They're just interspersed throughout the muscle belt. Now, the purpose of the muscle spindle apparatus is to tell the spinal cord and ultimately the brain information about velocity dependent stretch. How it does this is through sensory endings. So the two sensory nerves that are pertinent to this apparatus, the names are annulospiral ending and flower spray ending. The annulospiral ending specifically wraps around the central region of both the nuclear bag fibers and the nuclear chain fibers. The flower spray endings are actually located over the contractile portion of the nuclear chain fibers specifically. The two important motor nerves or efferent nerves these are the gamma fibers and the alpha fibers. Your alpha fibers are the ones that we normally think about. These are the ones that innervate the extrafusal fibers. So when you elicit a muscle contraction, you're using your alpha motor fibers. Your gamma fibers are the ones that innervate the contractile portion of your intrafusal fibers. So understand that when the gamma fibers elicit a, a muscle contraction of these intrafusal fibers, this does not actually result in a physical muscle contraction that we can see because only the alpha motor neurons and their respective extrafusal fibers can create a physical motion because frankly, the strength and the number of the intrafusal muscle fibers, they're just not strong enough to cause any sort of deformation. So it's just the alpha motor neurons. Now I wanna summarize. So essentially you have a big bulky muscle fiber the extrafusal fiber that can be told to contract via the alpha motor neuron, the efferent motor neuron. It's telling the muscle to contract. We also have other components within a muscle that tell the spinal cord and again, ultimately tell the brain that a muscle is lengthening. This is where the muscle spindle apparatus comes in. The muscle spindle apparatus is made up of intrafusal muscle fibers that are contractile and they in, are interspersed between the extrafusal fibers throughout the muscle belly. These are told to contract through a motor neuron, an efferent neuron called the gamma motor neuron. The intrafusal fibers also have an afferent or sensory nerve that's attached to them that responds to stretching. Now these are called the annulospiral endings and the flower spray endings. These two are a tiny bit different from each other, but just understand that they are both reactive to when a muscle stretches and are specifically reactive to when they are stretched quickly. So this is why with the muscle spindle apparatus, um, we say it's velocity dependent. So if you're stretching a muscle, you're lengthening the muscle, let's say you know, you're extending your elbow to stretch the biceps, it's actually not going to elicit any sort of response if you do it slowly, only quickly. 
Now let's go to a different image to talk more about how this works. So obviously this image is significantly different from the previous one that we saw because clearly our muscles don't look like this. However, just remember that a lot of the times that you're studying schematics kind of have to look a little bit different from reality because it really is hard to illustrate a concept if everything is meshed together. You know, like the previous image, there's a lot going on. So I think it'd be hard to kind of see how all these things are working together. Um, instead of you know using a clean cut nice separated image like this so if you look at the left third of the schematic let's look at what each component is so we have the extra fusel fiber with its attached motor neuron yes alpha motor neuron now look at the intrafusal muscle fiber with its attached motor neuron the gamma motor neuron then we also have the annular spiral ending which is a sensory neuron so the first image on the left this is at baseline nothing is really happening so let's say we're talking about the biceps muscle and let's say a person is either passively flexing your elbow or you're actively contracting your biceps muscle. Either way, your muscle is shortening, correct? So as you see in this middle image, both the extrafusal and intrafusal muscle fibers are shortened. So they're on slack. Now what needs to happen with the intrafusal fiber is that now it needs to be recalibrated. We're at a different length now. The way that's recalibrated is by activating the gamma motor neuron to signal the intrafusal muscle fiber to contract. So now at this new shortened slack in length of the biceps, we have a new baseline. We've contracted, we're at a new baseline. If the body did not reset the tension of the intrafusal fiber, then we would need to stretch the muscle that much further to be able to tell the body that it's being stretched. Why this matters is because our body wants to protect itself. I would rather know that someone is yanking my arm within one second than being yanked within three seconds. It's a protective mechanism. Now, before we start talking about the slide, there are a few things that I want to clarify that are worthy to make note of. So number one, when you look at the screen and you find where it says the 1B fiber, which is actually just right next to my face, this 1B fiber is with respect to the GTO, which is the Golgi tendon organ. This is not something that we're talking about in this lecture, so please just disregard it. And number two, where it says descending fibers, you know, you see a little bit, uh, a small circle around two lines. These are descending fibers that are coming from the brain. So just imagine if you actually just drew an extension of these two fibers or these two lines all the way up and off the screen, you know, they're coming down from the brain to the spinal cord to this level. So also note that the descending fibers, they attach to both the gamma and the alpha motor neuron. Additionally, the 1A fiber, this is that annulospiral ending. So this is our sensory neuron that if you follow the green line directly, it communicates with the alpha motor neuron. Now, what does the muscle spindle apparatus matter? Well, let's talk about a normal scenario. Let's say that nothing has happened to us. No stroke, no spinal cord injury, nothing alike. So let's say someone were to quickly stretch my biceps muscle. What's going to happen is that I'm going to have a quick reaction to flex the elbow because it's a reflex that happens at the level of the spinal cord. Now, just understand that everything that we talk about, we're going to go into more detail, but just a surface level kind of explanation. Then this information that someone has quickly tugged my elbow is going to be set up to the level of the brain, the brain's gonna process it, and then it's gonna come all the way back down through descending fibers in order to regulate my response. The reason it happens in this order is that if you just look at the distance that it takes to go from the sensory nerve to the spinal cord versus the sensory nerve all the way up to the brain and all the way back down, it literally is a further distance. And because of that, it takes more time for that secondary response to occur. Secondary meaning the brain. It doesn't take that much time, but it takes that much longer. So that's why you can't really control a, a reflex because the brain hasn't had that opportunity yet to process it. So the spinal cord reflex is always what's going to occur first. Now let's say things are not functioning as they should. Let's say something like a spinal cord injury has occurred above the level of where all this is occurring. So when there's an injury above that level, the information is not able to be sent up to the brain because communication is now broken. And obviously if it can't go up, there's nothing to be processed, so nothing can come down. So there's no regulation of this reflex. And what this reflex is called is spasticity. And let's go through why this happens. So imagine that my biceps muscle is quickly lengthened. Again, same scenario. 
It is a normal response for my annual spiral ending and my flower spray ending to pick this information up of this quick muscle lengthening because that's its job. We talked about that in the previous slide. So as you'll see in this schematic, this sensory information is going to be sent through the dorsal horn of your spinal cord. It's going to directly communicate with the alpha motor neuron. Well, again, on a normal basis, just think about it practically. If someone without your knowing were to quickly jerk your elbow into extension, without you even thinking about it, you're probably going to have a reflex and react to contract it because why would I want you know someone to just jerk my arm back? Again, this is happening prior to the brain being able to process it, um, but our normal reaction is not spasticity. Again, this is because the brain is able to process it and kind of tell our body to relax the biceps muscle. This is normal, but in the case of a spinal cord injury, where we do not have that ability to send information up to the brain due to the fact that there is a block in the communication, thus the inability to come down and regulate it, even if a person were to look at someone extending their elbow and expecting that this is going to happen, this lack of regulation is going to result in spasticity. So this is because there is a constant cycle of your annular spiral ending sensing that lengthening. So this information is going to be sent from the annular spiral ending of this quick stretch. It's going to travel through the dorsal horn immediately attached to that alpha motor neuron, which is going to tell the muscle to contract. As long as that stimulus is still there, there's no regulation coming from the brain. So what the annular spiral ending does is it's going to do its job. It is going to sense that there is a continued lengthening, quick lengthening of that biceps muscle. It's going to travel and send that information through the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and attach to the alpha motor neuron. The alpha motor neuron, again, is going to tell that muscle to contract. So the story continues as long as the stimulus is it. And that is how spasticity occurs. Now, if you think about a real life setting and you have a patient who has had a spinal cord injury or a stroke, whatever it is, you were to extend one of their muscles. Again, it does not have to be the biceps muscle. It could be their hamstring, for instance. It's going to result in spasticity because of this constant reflex arc. But as soon as you take that stimulus off of you taking your hands off them, it should go back to normal. Now, one more thing I want to touch upon is that if you look at this image, only the descending fibers are the ones that communicate any information to the gamma motor neuron. So if there is a block coming from the descending tract, your gamma motor neuron does not have anything to do with spasticity because it's being blocked from above. So what could it possibly do with that? I hope I was able to answer some questions that you might have. If you like this material, please like and subscribe and consider using SPT with me when you're studying for your NPT. Here are the references that I use. Very helpful. Catch you next time.